I will not stand by and let Rishi Sunak, Jeremy Hunt, or anyone else say that education is not worth investing in. Because for others, it is worth dying for. Thank you, conference. Over the summer, my sister and I were sorting through my late father's flat. We came across this. It's an exam certificate from 1968. My dad had come to the UK from Zanzibar for this piece of paper. He'd passed his electrical engineering course at the Northern Polytechnic. His success allowed him to start a business on Kilburn High Street, selling and repairing TVs, videos, and radios. He'd uprooted himself from his family for this, a great education, new opportunities, the ambition to do something more with his life. And that is what drives me too. From a very young age, my dad instilled in me and my sisters the importance of education. I wouldn't be here today without the opportunities that he and my mum worked so hard to ensure that we had. As a parent to two young children, I want to give them a great start in life too. And millions of parents up and down the country want to do exactly the same. Conference, I'm a Liberal Democrat because we believe that education is an investment like no other. It, it fights against poverty, ignorance, and conformity. It turbocharges talent and cultivates creativity. It creates conscientious citizens who play their part in their communities. When we invest in education, we invest in our children, in their potential, and in our country's future growth. It is part of our mission, as Paddy Ashdown said, to create a more prosperous nation with a more generous heart. So what about the Conservatives? Well, Rishi Sunak says that education is the closest thing we have to a silver bullet. But he's sucking the lifeblood out of our schools and colleges. Every time he utters that line, I think about the primary school head in my constituency who mended the fence and picked up the fox poo for months because her school couldn't afford a site manager. I think of the mum who told me that she stopped buying her medication so that her daughter at college could afford some lunch. And I remember the seven-year-old who'd waited 16 months for a mental health assessment and had just been told to wait another year. These are not the signs of a government that cares about young people. These are the signs of a conservative party that takes children for granted. And we know why. Because they don't have a voice and because they don't have a vote. We've had nine education secretaries in eight years. The current one, well, she thinks she's the only one not sat on her ass and that she ought to be thanked for it. I mean, but this isn't just a problem with one department. It goes to the very heart of government. Because ultimately, the Treasury just doesn't understand the value of education. For when ministers ask for a new road or railway, the Treasury gets out its green book and starts adding up the predicted long-term benefits to jobs and the economy. But when someone comes along and asks to build a school, what long-term economic benefits do the Treasury predict? Zilch, zip, zero. Children and young people are seen as a cost, a drain, a burden on the government's finances. Liberal Democrats, we know that that is simply not true. And and when our colleges and schools beg, bowl in hand, asking, please, sir, I want some more, who is the Mr. Bumble in our Dickensian nightmare? 
Rishi Sunak. As Chancellor, time and again, he denied our children the investment they so desperately need. When the pandemic hit, our children were forgotten. Thousands are still missing from school. Millions have a probable mental health disorder. And despite the heroics of our teachers reinventing their lessons for online learning, tens of millions of hours were lost from school. The government's own advisor said that children needed 15 billion pounds to catch up. Otherwise, all the work done over a decade closing the attainment gap would be wiped out. Which chancellor coughed up less than a third of that? Rishi Sunak. When crumbling concrete was found in a school in Essex last month, they moved pupils to a wedding venue for four days a week. Another sent pupils home for two months to protect them from asbestos because they couldn't find anywhere else to send them. Officials told the Treasury that schools needed £5 billion a year to stop their crumbling buildings from collapsing completely. Which Chancellor gave them less than two-thirds of that? Rishi Sunak. The government's food czar told the Treasury to give free school meals to every family on universal credit. Otherwise, 900,000 children below the breadline would miss out on a hot, healthy lunch each day. Which chancellor ignored him? You got it, Rishi Sunak. He simply doesn't appreciate the value of education. <laughs> and as for Labour, they wouldn't even commit to scrapping the two-child benefit limit. They thought it made them look fiscally responsible, honestly. So let me say to Keir Starmer, raise your ambitions for once, scrap the two-child limit and back the Liberal Democrats' plan for every child in poverty to get a free school meal. <laughs> Conference, education is in our party's DNA. Lib Dem-run councils like my own in Richmond have provided school meal vouchers during the holidays long after the Conservatives scrapped it nationwide. In Wales, as Education Minister, Kirsty Williams rolled out a transformative new national curriculum. At every, level, at every level, Liberal Democrats know that education is the best investment we can make in our children's futures. When we invest in our nurseries, schools, colleges and universities, we invest in human capital, generating returns for generations to come. So at the next election, the Liberal Democrats will put children and young people at the heart of our policy making. For the teenager struggling with social media or their body image, a mental health professional in every school funded by taxing the social media giants. For the daughter whose mum has turned off the heating at home in order to feed her a free school meal for every child in primary school and for every child in poverty in secondary school. For the, pu for the pupils learning in drafty classrooms and leaky school halls, new investment to clear the crumbling concrete, remove the repair backlog, and rebuild hundreds of classrooms. That's the Liberal Democrat plan for our schools. And, and to make the Treasury listen, we will commission the Office for National Statistics to measure the value to the economy of investing in our country's skills and knowledge. We'll set the Treasury the target to increase that figure year after year. We will leave no future government in doubt that education is an investment worth making. Be because conference, there are parents up and down the country who each and every day are making that investment in their own children helping children with their homework, working hard to afford to send them to after-school clubs, music lessons, summer camps, or even tutoring. But not every parent has the resources to make that investment, and that entrenches inequality, causing children from poorer backgrounds to fall even further behind. So Liberal Democrats will provide those parents with a vital boost. Since the pandemic, England schools have been using tutoring to help the most disadvantaged young people catch up rapidly on their lost learning. To be clear, the government's national tutoring program has been beset with problems, from incompetent outsourcing to shortages of tutors. It was a tiny fraction of the size it ought to have been. 
Yet despite all that, it has had some success. Hundreds of thousands of students got extra support. Schools that focused on the poorest pupils boosted their maths and English grades. Parents said that their children became more confident. But yet again, yet again just as we're seeing some progress, the Conservatives pulled the plug. This year's programme will be its last. Even then, half of school leaders won't use the tutoring programme at all this year. Their school budgets are so squeezed that they can't afford it. Conference, I am fed up with the Conservatives letting down our young people over and over again. So Liberal Democrats will invest in our young people to transform their education. Tutoring will no longer be something that only an elite few can afford. Under the Liberal Democrats, it will be for the millions. <laughs> a generation of young people will get the tailored support they need. Schools and colleges will be funded to provide small group tutoring for almost two million pupils who have fallen behind with their learning. Liberal Democrats will invest in our children so that every child, no matter their background, will have the opportunity to flourish. And at the same time, we know that education has never been just been about getting good grades. School trips, music lessons, sports teams, and coding clubs all broaden children's horizons. Yet they're the first to be scrapped when school budgets are squeezed. So we choose to protect creative subjects and ensure that every child can access these opportunities. Now, conference, the investment we make in education and families is no more crucial than in the first years of life. After lunch, we'll be deba debating a motion outlining why Rishi Sunak's doing childcare on the cheap and how we'd transform the early years sector. But we also need to invest in those vital first few months where parental contact with your newborn is crucial for their physical, social, and educational development. Now, I accept that the Wilsons are an unusual family. Few people met their partners at the Leicester South by-election in 2004. <laughs> but we're also fortunate that we're able to afford for my amazing husband to stay at home and look after our children. Unusual because it remains rare for the man to take on the primary caring responsibilities. Yet I know so many parents, mums and dads, who long to spend time with their kids, to be there the first time they smile, to hear their first word, to help them take their first steps. I'm proud that Jo Swinson, as Employment Minister, helped Liberal Democrats introduce shared parental leave so that every, every family would have more choice over how to balance their home and work life. But if I'm honest, not enough men are taking up that offer. We need to persuade more Kens in this world to take a short break from doing beach and head on back to the Mojo Dojo Casa House. <laughs> but, I, but I know that many dads do want to spend more time with their kids. They just simply can't afford it. So Liberal Democrats will turbocharge parental leave, doubling pay so that new parents don't have to rush back to work if they don't want to, extending it to cover the first full year of a child's life, and crucially, helping dads spend time with their little one with an extra month of use it or lose it time off. We will give these rights to every family welcoming in a new child permanently, employed or self-employed, for a birth child, an adopted child, or for a kinship care arrangement. That is what a fair deal for families looks like. <laughs> Conference, my mum and dad turned their lives upside down because they believed in the precious power of education. They are not the only ones. Two years ago, when the Taliban took over Afghanistan, my constituent's brother was shot dead. Four girls and a boy were left fatherless. His dying wish that his girls would get a good education seemed almost impossible. These were British citizens, people who this heartless, anti-refugee shower of a home office mercifully couldn't ignore. So we had hope. But to get them to the UK, 
their Afghan mother needed a visa. Ministers wouldn't listen. But after months of letters and lobbying, shouting and almost crying in Parliament, they finally relented. Conference by some minor miracle, we got them home. <clears throat> a home where those girls will now get the education that the Taliban so pathetically denied them. Home where they will learn new skills, new languages, where they will unleash their creativity and where they will unlock their potential. Home where they will have hope. Their father died longing that one day his daughters would get an education. I will not stand by and let Rishi Sunak, Jeremy Hunt, or anyone else say that education is not worth investing in. Because for others, it is worth dying for. So Liberal Democrats will invest in our children, tutoring for the millions, a mental health professional in every school, doubling maternity pay, free school meals for every child in poverty, and an end to the scandal of crumbling school buildings. That is the investment, that is the fair deal that Liberal Democrats are fighting for. Thank you, conference.